We're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married, moved into a van, and have been chasing adventures all around the globe ever since, and are now searching for a place to call home somewhere soon. Subscribe and join the ride. Driving from Baja California Norte all the way down to the tippy tip of Baja California Sur in our last episode, exploring beach after beach, discovering the magic of the canyons and pueblos every step of the way. In today's episode, as we begin our adventure-laced northbound return, you'll find us waking up on the shores of Cerritos, though where we end up is unlike anywhere else we've been in Baja. Amazing! They were riding the motion of the wave. Wow! Along with the dolphins, another remarkable thing about this area was the size of the homes. Nearly all new construction and nearly all foreign money. Just wanted to show you guys this property here. We kind of love what they did. It's a container and you can park your van underneath the sort of treehouse-like structure there. So it's all raised. And they also get a view on the top floor. I actually really love the freedom of architecture all up in here. So cute. Organic fresh vegetables. Drew and I both feel like this looking for a property chapter of our lives has been going on for a really long time. But it's really hard for us to make this first step. We know that this isn't gonna be the only property we ever buy, but it is the first one. It's such a new experience for us. And my dad has a lot of friends actually in Mexico. He does a lot of international business. He works for Life Fitness. They make fitness equipment. He speaks Spanish, Portuguese, English, and French. But he has a realtor friend here in Baja who might actually be able to show us some pretty interesting properties. So. That's an opportunity. It's an open door. We might as well walk through it and see what we find. Right? Right. Everyone say cheese. Cheese. Yeah. <laughs> so that's exactly what we did. We returned to the East Cape for a day of looking at properties. Because after eight years of living in a van, why not? When in Baja. Ooh. One thing that makes looking at property extra challenging out here is there's no Wi-Fi in the area. That's true, which is why they call the East Cape Old Baja. It's like living in the 80s out here. You have to figure out your own power, which luckily solar wouldn't be an issue. But water, now that's a lot trickier, along with the fact that it's blistering hot half the year and you really can't leave your property unattended, unless you live in one of the gated gringo communities. But what we loved was its wild ruggedness. Although they have slowly been paving the road the closer you get to Cabo. So it is starting to change. But the hope is that they'll preserve this beautiful place for generations to enjoy forever and ever because it really is stunning. Property number one. There is a lot of spiky things that would need cleared out. Oh, oh my. <laughs> This is the beachfront property for 360K. Ah, you can see the marker for the property. It's actually that stake with the orange flag. Oh, yeah. Same here, there's a marker there as well. So that's kind of really skinny. Yeah, it's long and skinny. So we're here at the second property and it comes with a shed, outdoor shower, and a little kitchen. Guys, this is crazy. We've consistently just said all we need is a place to park our van that has a hot shower. I mean, a real toilet. Notice the tie downs on the shed? This is because they actually get hurricanes in the area. And this little hilltop probably gets pretty windy. The water tanks are right at the corner of the property. One, two, three, four, five. But wait till you see this view. This looks over the surf break nine palms. It's pretty cool. Just for the record, the little structure that's up there along with the bathroom and all the storage Shed, area the water tanks that was not mentioned in the listing not at all uh and guys, the view is definitely better than we even anticipated i mean you're looking right at the surf break and you can do whatever you want on this property or so we thought unfortunately it was zoned for a single residential home which ended up being a deal breaker for us but we were so excited about it at first oh the possibilities until 
permitting. <laughs> I really didn't expect to like this. Like the possibilities. This. You know what I mean? Ah, oh, this is confusing, guys. Babes, look at that. They're definitely building something big. I hope that's a yoga studio. We also found out that they were building a major hub for surf lessons and board rentals here, which would make a single residential home even less ideal in our eyes. I mean, if you could make it a surf hostel or something super cool of this sort, then it would be a different story. I can't say I love this thing. But, but realistically, where you're living, you're so much higher up there. Like, so it's way further back up there. Yeah, it does. You hardly see the restaurant up there. As we tried justifying potential negative aspects of the property before knowing all of the details, a huge motivating factor behind the option of being near a surf break was the adventure seekers it would attract, along with the fact that my dad lives to surf. We are actually going to look at some properties for my dad. He's really only interested in land on an undeveloped surf break because there are so few of those left in the world. He's worked in the fitness industry, and he's always wanted to stay fit to surf, fit for life, fit to stay rad. Rad. Surf, surf. Rad dad. And with plans to retire soon, he was a big fan. Plus, it was an hour away from the Cabo airport. Making our way to our third and final property, this one was a bit on the outskirts far away from any neighbors, which was nice, but also not nice, because in Baja, it just felt safer and smarter to be near others. But it was basically like owning a piece of the beach. We had to see it. There's some really harsh terrain, spiky, spiky weeds. <laughs> that would be the view. And you're right on the arroyo right here. This could be ours. This could be ours. It feels unreal. Like dads. Like what? <laughs> we would live on it. We're doing research. We're gathering information. We're seeing all the things. Now, where were we? We deliver pizza. <gasps> it's a sign. There's another container situation. That's cool. Containers seem to pair well with RVs and vans because whenever you want to go be nomadic and explore, you can just completely lock up your container. I'm really liking that idea. Okay, I think this is a campground on the hill. From campgrounds to beachfront properties, surf breaks, and whales, Baja was inspiring us in all the ways. But for whatever reason, it still didn't feel like home. At least, not yet. That Boro is not real. How's that new tie down been working out? I think it's been doing the job. So far, I haven't heard any loud kabams. But, you know, we've been parking up on a lot of salty beaches really close to the waves. And I think Lucky Blue needs a bit of a bath. Dust, dirt, and Baja. Lucky Blue, you're an absolute animal. Many smiles ahead. Do you guys notice something missing right here? Uno, where'd it go? The other day I was riding and this cracked on me right here. One of the mounts that screws in that holds the mirror up. <laughs> That's weird, it's like something, oh my gosh. That whole thing's loose now. My body must have hit the mirror and snapped this. That's my whole clutch lever. Oh, that is not good. That is not good at all. Being unable to squeeze my clutch was gonna be a no-go and I was so bummed because I was excited for the ride ahead. At this point, I was roughly an hour north of Los Bariles with no mechanics around. Luckily, I had the idea to stop by a construction site where I found some really helpful Mexicans that came to my rescue. They were so happy to come to my rescue. They pulled out some wire, they wrapped it around, and we realized we needed to undo it with a tornillo, a wrench, shove some paper in there, which now prevents the clutch from falling forward or slipping down. It's not a perfect fix, but it's really holding rock solid now. This thing is not moving. And I've rode quite a bit more on some really rough terrain. Doesn't seem to be an issue now. It's gonna hold up the rest of Baja. I need one helper to hold the water hose. You got it. Yeah. Slow. Can you pump it up? 
Hey babe, they let us fill up for free. Oh, that's so nice. They're so nice. I was like, I used the Manguera, the hose, that. He kind of looks at our van. I was like, the guy out front told me to come back here. He's like, ah, oh. it's free. Go. I was oh. like, are you sure? I was about to pull my wallet and wow. dang. How nice. Just another example of kindness here. Oh. <laughs> and there's a goat in the box. <laughs> Hola, buddy. A cabra. <laughs> oh, you're tied to the tree. You got a nice beard. You've been working on it. Well oiled. Adios. <laughs> he did have a nice beard. Por la cena, we have a vegetable melange and look at that white sea bass. Instant fish tacos. Ta da! Tacos for dinner and. Buenos dias, breakfast tacos. We've come to determine that there is no such thing as too many tacos. We've literally been trying to get sick of them so we don't miss them too much once we have to leave Baja, but it's not working. Good morning, Pero. Can you guys hear that squeaking sound? That's our brakes. We've been having a lot of squeaking coming from our four tires. It's been something we've been pushing, but I did a little research and we found a shop here in Todos Santos. They're gonna replace all of our brake pads today. The cost for this is 6,850 pesos, which is about $340. I think it's a pretty fair deal given it's about $170 per axle. It's like the same cost of our window. I think 6,000 pesos is a going right here in Mexico for any type of repair project. Yeah. I'm just glad we won't be squealing all the way through town anymore. <laughs> I'm just happy to know that our brakes won't give out on us. I think there may be the original brakes and we've got 62,000 miles on our van now. Wow. Yeah, it's time. This place came highly recommended on iOverlander. So right here you can see the brake rotor and everything's getting changed. You can see the real difference here between the new ones, how much more thick the brake pads are versus the old one that's really worn down. Did he say that it was pretty important that we did this now? It'll make the sound stop? We hope so. It's looking good. Buencha Baja. Yeah. <laughs> is not working. There's no way to fix it. There's some sort of malfunction and glitch in the mechanism. And now we have no form of air conditioning or airflow other than this little guy. At least we have this thing. Don't let us down. <laughs> I guess he's got a name. Mitchell. You're our best friend right now. Look who's back. That was such a freaking amazing ride. We're still here at the brake guy. Our brakes are fixed, but the brother-in-law of the guy who fixed our brakes. Loves riding motorcycles too. So Drew just went on a little adventure. It was really fun to ride with a couple other guys. And look, even our guy who changed the brakes, he's about to take a ride. <laughs> that was a blast. Thanks, man. Yeah. That was the best was riding killer. I've done here. That Did was... you blaze new trails? Yeah. That, yeah, we found some new trails. Yeah, you guys are good riders. Sweet, you're a good rider. <laughs> Yeah, I was surprised. He was like right behind us. Yeah. Trying to keep up. Yeah. yeah. He plays oh. it nice and safe with me. I like going. I, I mean, I love that little fling. But yeah. he doesn't do what he does <laughs> with, when I'm on that no, bike. Oh, yeah. You, you were yeah. railing. Could use a couple extra pieces of armor and yeah, some gear, you know? For sure. I got I got a little ate up by the cactuses on the trail. He told me he's taken a couple wipeouts out there before and actually last year he broke your shoulder, right? Yeah. Are you filming? Yeah. Camera. That's the camera. These are my little friends, amigos here. <laughs> These are the kids of the guys I was riding with. You guys wanna say hi to the blog? Uh, hi. 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 <laughs> These guys are surfers. Yeah. yeah. And there's their dad. <laughs> How cool. They live in Washington most of the year and they're down here for three months. Shannon married his wife, who's a local who's lived in this house where the shop is. Just when you think you're gonna get your brakes fixed and then you end up making friends. You just never know. Baja's pretty cool like that. So cool you can do all that here. I love it. They both uh, ride motorcycles, they're amazing surfers. We're going for the maiden voyage. The trail run. So I can't go that way. That's a one-way street. Do you hear that? I don't hear any squeaking right now or like grinding or high-pitched screech. First breaking. 
Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Wow, that did the trick. That did the trick. One thing to take off our to-do list. All we gotta do now is hmm, maybe fix that or I guess just wait. Good things come to those who wait, right? Which is why Drew and I were both so excited to get our hands on our new ethically produced threads from the sponsor of today's episode. Seedin, an amazing brand that makes the most comfortable outdoor gear in a way that combats the pollution, waste, and environmental destruction that we all too often see along our travels. My favorite item, if I had to choose, would have to be my long sleeve traveler tee. It's made of a super soft blend of eucalyptus tree fiber and merino wool. It's wrinkle resistant, regulates my body temperature, and it stays fresh for up to seven days. Basically, I recommend everybody have at least one of these in their wardrobe. My faves are my Helio shorts. The super lightweight fabric is actually made from discarded fishing nets. Cool. So cool. And by using our link below, you'll get 30% off site-wide. And the first 20 people to make a purchase will also get a free cozy beanie. Sounds like an offer too good to wait for. Good morning. The sun is rising and today we're going to attempt to summit the highest peak in all of Baja. It was actually the highest peak in the Sierra de la Laguna range. The highest peak in all of Baja is in the Norte, Picacho del Diablo, clocking in at over 10,000 feet. But it was really hard to find information on the hike we were about to embark upon today, which you'll soon find out. You ready up there? I feel like a deer in the headlights. <laughs> a quick pit stop here to kind of rearrange our situation because we both have big backpacks on today and my cuddle buddy can't squeeze on tight yeah i'm like a koala with not much to grab onto like my fingertips are holding onto his backpack straps and we have an hour-long ride to the trailhead also this trail is about 16 miles round trip 10 hours total just under 6,000 feet of elevation gain so this is no small 6,000? Yeah, it's about 7.30 a.m. now. Hopefully we're hitting the trail just before nine. If we have 10 hours of hiking, that, oh. We'll see what happens. Got a spot for me right here. Precious cargo. Oh gosh. You comfortable? Yeah, this is good. My backpack rests on top of yours. Perfect, and you can snuggle. Yeah. Entrance to the Sierra de la Laguna. We made it. Hey. <laughs> should be a door right here. Well, you have a really nice view. Why would they put a door? <laughs> it's definitely a different type of terrain out here. This part of Baja actually receives more rainfall than any other part of the peninsula. So what we're going to be seeing is going to be so different from what we've been seeing for the past few months. And the road that we've been riding to get here made me feel really grateful that we did not try and take spirit down that sandy, bumpy road. But we're not to the trailhead just yet. There's a butterfly on my backpack. Look at how beautiful. What's special? Today is going to be a very good day. Little mushy. It's like the first sign of tree color change. Wardrobe change 
it's gonna be a hot one today. 82 degrees Fahrenheit. It was about 50 or so on the bike this morning. So I'm really glad we had jackets and pants on, but now we're stuffing them into our helmet and preparing for a hot one. And here's the sign. That feels good to see. I wasn't sure if there was gonna be any sort of signage or arrows, but at least we know we're in the right place. And according to our all trails map, I think this trail right in front of us is gonna connect to that red trail once we, yeah, turn left. Good morning. Morning. I don't know if we'll make it all the way to the summit, but you know we'll try. <laughs> it's hard to turn around ever, so we're going. I know. Also, the first day we've had our hiking boots on, I think. Right? I think it is the first time in Baja. <gasps> Crazy. Something else I want to say is that so much of our minds and conversations are about living or moving to Baja or Portugal and the pros and cons of each. And I think today we're just going to try our best to be here on the trail, let our minds find some peace and trust that the right decision will be made in the right time. <sighs> Sometimes you just gotta turn off our brains a little bit because you'll drive yourself crazy just trying to find the answers sometimes. Or at least we do. We can't know everything, right? Nope. As simple as that. Lucky Blue, we're leaving you here. <laughs> can't believe I have to do that all over again for an hour. That was not the easiest ride. You did great. This thing is the best. Thank you, Barista. You're welcome. Also, can I just point out Drew's battle wounds from his motorbike ride yesterday? It's like I got in a fight with a big cat. I think it was a cat cactus. <laughs> 9.09. Listo? Are we there yet? <laughs> Not yet. We're going this way, right through that little canyon there. This hike is pretty amazing. And it's hot. <laughs> I'm like dripping already. I did predict a hot day. This is so steep, like relentlessly steep, but we're nearing the ridge. Behind us, you can see like the beach where we hiked all around Punta Lobos and saw whales for the first time in Baja. And on the other side, it's our first view of the Sea of Cortez. The old window. It was pretty cool to be able to see both sides of the peninsula, all the way from Todos Santos to La Ventana. Views like this always put things into greater perspective. We were looking across all of Baja. And this just keeps going up. The shade is wonderful. We still weren't at the top. In fact, we had a long ways to go. And the further we went, the more we began to wonder where this trail was taking us. We learned that very few people hike the trails in Baja. In fact, most hikes are done with a guide. And so there's barely any information on how and where to do it on your own. Sendero a la Burera. I don't know what that means. We're in the nucleus. <laughs> so I know we said we were going to try to not talk about Portugal and Baja, but it's literally all that we've been talking about. Impossible. Yeah, like that's what you talk about on the trail, things that are on your mind that are important to you. <sighs> Where was I going with this? What do oh. you weigh like a cashew? Trail nuts? <laughs> <sighs> the map here has us going less than a mile that direction, which we thought was the peak, but we just came across our first sign of like this entire trail. El Picacho, the peak. So now we are faced with a decision it's after two o'clock and we have seven miles plus to hike back down, plus another hour ride to our van. It's at least gonna take us three hours to hike down. I mean, we're pushing it. We cannot turn around later than three. Is it fair to say that my favorite part of this adventure was riding Lucky Blue? <laughs> oh. Oh. Although we could have crossed right there and it would have been a breeze. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. That is totally the peak. It is. Nope, that was not the peak.
It looks like we were so close to the top. It's now after 2.30 and we've gone over eight miles. We just got long, flat, and meandering. Yeah. It seemed like it was even taking us to a peak. Although maybe it was taking us way out here to this nebular at the end. Who knows? And that's why it just wasn't going up. Yeah. They say it's the most undiscovered part of Baja. We gotta be pushing 7,000 feet. We might be the highest humans in Baja right now. High on life, baby. Only the drone could pick us up on a little hook and drop us back off at the bottom. <laughs> Was it worth it? Always. Would we recommend it? Not so much. We were just glad to be heading home with the last bit of light left. Oh, we couldn't wait to get there. We're back at Spirit. That's a good feeling. My butt, my legs. Oh, we're alive. Oh, can we order delivery? Oh my gosh. They delivered to the playa? Can somebody shower for me? <laughs> mm. uh. <sighs> it's so hot oh. in here right now. Drew, you're amazing. <laughs> we got a temporary fix to our ceiling fan right now. I disconnected the sensor that goes to the hatch that gets raised up and we're able to turn on just the fin and manually lift the hatch prior to doing so. Can we like switch their direction? Or? We can. Aaron. Oh my gosh. I didn't know how we were gonna survive Baja without this fan. It's been like really hot and it's only getting hotter. Especially at night when we're laying in our bed, we use this fan to create like a vacuum suction effect yeah. where it pulls in cool outdoor air, outside air, into the upper part in the back of our van above the bed and pulls it right out through this van. Thank goodness. <laughs> I'm high, but at least we're getting a little bit cooler now. I think something in the gears went kaput, and we're gonna have to get a new part when we get back to the States. But at least we're not gonna roast for our last weeks or however long we end up staying here in Baja. This is a lifesaver. We don't recommend coming to Baja without a working van fan. Or don't come to Baja in a van during the late spring summer duration. Truth, yeah. There's nothing very exciting happening at the moment. I gotta cut a couple more screws out. Phew, that was a lot to fit into one episode. Hopefully you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed sharing it. And if you did, tap that subscribe button. See you back here for our next episode. We can't wait. You guys are the best.